Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Gepper C Cineron HD3, which is probably one of the best Cinewhoop style 3-inch quadcopters that you can get for the DJI Digital HD FPV system. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, and then test it both indoors and outdoors. The Cineron HD3 version that I'm going to test in this video is the one which is bundled with the TBS Crossfire Nano SE receiver, which is pre-installed and pre-configured, and in addition, you can also get two other versions which come with FRSky compatible receivers and another version that doesn't come with an external receiver, so you can either use the DJI Air Unit in case you are using the DJI Radio Controller or simply add your own receiver. In terms of packaging, inside the box, along with the quadcopter, you can find some stickers, a 3D printed TPU GoPro Hero 7 camera mount, two 20cm long, high quality Gepper C branded battery velcro straps, the user manual for the DJI FPV air unit, two plastic tubes for protecting the antennas of your radio receiver, two pieces of foam stickers, a 90 degrees USB extension adapter, and two sets of HQ Prop 3 inch propellers in addition to the one which is already pre-installed on the quadcopter. In terms of specs, the Cineron HD3 is using the Gepper C GL1404 3650KB motors which are compatible with up to 4S LiPo batteries, the motors are pushing the HQ Prop 3 inch propellers, which are in my experience both efficient and durable, and the propellers are protected by these removable and very flexible and robust propeller guards. On the front of the quadcopter, you can find the Gepro C Stable F7 Pro 20x20 mini stack, which I've previously reviewed. It's based on a 35 ampere 4 in 1 BLA32 ESC and an F7 flight controller, which came pre flashed with Betaflight 4.1.1 and features dual ICM2689 gyro chips. A 35 volts 220 microfarad capacitor is pre-soldered to the battery pads. The battery is designed to be mounted on the top of the frame and the quadcopter is using an XT30 battery connector. On the back of the quadcopter, mounted inside this 3D printed TPU mount, you can find the DJI Air unit. Its stock antennas are mounted inside this 3D printed TPU mount and their RM6 connector is properly secured. In addition, the DJI camera is protected by these two carbon fiber plates, however I don't think that this protection is enough, and I highly recommend to use this kind of 3D printed TPU part that is going to reduce the risk of the lens breaking in case of a crash. You should note that the DJI Air unit is directly connected to the battery pads, and you should only stick to up to 4S batteries, because otherwise you are simply going to burn it. The width of the frame is 155mm, the distance between the left motors and the right ones is about 125mm and the distance between the front motors and the back ones is 88mm so this is a dead cat style frame and I can confirm that the propellers are not going to get in your view. The thickness of the bottom unibody plate is 3mm, the thickness of the top plate is 2mm and the thickness of the side plates that protect the DJI camera is 1.3mm. The dry weight of the Cineron HD3 is 211 grams. After adding this tattoo 850 mAh 4S LiPo battery, which is the one that I recommend to use, it brings us to a total weight of 313.4 grams. And including the GoPro Hero 7 mount, it brings us to a total weight of almost 330 grams. Now since the weight of each removable propeller guard is 6.3 grams, after removing the propeller guards, the dry weight of the quadcopter is going to be about 186 grams and in case you need to get your quadcopter under 250 grams, the biggest battery that you're going to be able to use is a 520 mAh 4S LHV battery. In order to get you in the air, you'll need to first of all activate the DJI Air Unit. It's done by connecting a battery to your quadcopter and connecting the DJI Air Unit to your computer using its USB-C connector. Then using the DJI Assistant software on your computer, activate the device and it's also recommended to update its firmware to the latest available version. The next thing that you need to do is to bind your radio receiver with your radio controller. This is a good opportunity to tell you that I've been testing the Cineran HD3 with the TBS Tango 2 which is going to be released in two days so stay tuned for my upcoming review. The next thing that you need to do is to connect the flight controller to your computer and configure it using Betaflight. Since the microUSB port is blocked by the propeller guard, you will need to carefully use this 90 degrees microUSB extension adapter. After connecting the quadcopter to your computer, open up Betaflight, hit connect, 
and you will need to plug a battery to the quadcopter in order to power up the receiver and you will need to make sure that everything works properly under the receiver tab. In addition, I also recommend to define your favorite modes and in case you would like to use the custom Betaflight OSD on your DJI HD FEV goggles, also select and arrange your favorite OSD elements. You should note that by default the voltage meter was set to the wrong scale value, so the scale was set to 110 which gave a wrong reading for the battery that was connected to the quadcopter and the proper value according to my test is 112. Now by the way, you can see that if we hit diff in the CLI tab on Betaflight, you can see that other changes were made to the default settings, so I'm going to include a dump file in the description box of this video. So in case you change the setting and you would like to revert to the original default settings, you can simply use it. The next thing that I've done is to test the Gepper C Cineran HD3 both indoors and outdoors and with and without the GoPro Hero 7 camera mounted on top of it. After testing it out, I can tell you that Gepper C did an amazing job with this quadcopter and in case you own the DJI HD FEV system and you're looking for a good 3-inch CineWoop quadcopter, this is probably going to be your best option. First of all, in terms of durability, the propeller guards are very durable and not going to break easily in case of a crash. In addition, the quadcopter is well tuned and will provide you with a very smooth flight experience. The 1404 3650 kV motors are very efficient and the setup is much quieter and lighter than this kind of setup which have been recently introduced by iFlight and Dyton. Finally, in terms of flight time, when not using the GoPro Hero 7 camera, you can expect between 6 to 7 minutes using this type of battery, which is pretty impressive, and in case you are going to mount the GoPro Hero 7 camera on the drone, it's going to reduce the flight time by roughly 2 minutes, which is still pretty good, and will provide you with a plenty of time to capture your cinematic shots. So overall, as you probably understand, I'm pretty pleased with this quadcopter, as it provides you the ability to capture both cinematic shots, and also do some very light acro flying as you're about to see in the flight footage in the end of this video. The main downside of this quadcopter is its price, as the version which comes with the TBS Crossfire Nano SE receiver costs over $400, so this is definitely not a cheap one, but keeping in mind that you are getting a very well-tuned and a highly built quadcopter, I think that it's worth its price. Now unfortunately when using this quadcopter I lost one of my micro SD cards since the micro SD card slot on the DJI Air unit is not protected. So what I recommend you to do is to put a piece of tape on this side of the micro SD card and then it's going to make sure that after a crash or a bad landing the micro SD card is not going to accidentally get ejected and potentially get lost. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage. On the first part, I didn't use the GoPro 7 camera and I tested the acrobatic capabilities of this quadcopter and on the second one, I added the GoPro Hero 7 camera and I demonstrated its cinematic style capabilities. So I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.